There's been a video that's been making the rounds, and I've talked about this story way back in the day on my podcast. It was a time when WWF at the time was over in Germany. We was on tour for about a week. we have probably been in England for about a week prior to this, and I was wrestling Triple H, and China was ringside. And after I stunned China, got the one, two, three on Triple H, a fan hits the ring and tries to attack me. And Triple H has his eyes open, just like a shark laying there. As soon as that fan got to me, which I thought was one of the boys, because way back in the day after a match, man, a lot of times in a place on the road show, house show, we'd come off to the back and jump in there and take guys' finishes as a rib. But this wasn't a rib. This was a fan who was at ringside who happened to be a Triple H and China fan and was not very happy that Stone Cold Steve Austin had given him a stunner and got the three count. So as I'm laying there, I'm taking off my black wrist tape, which is one of the things I always like to do after a match, whether it was on the mat, you know, like it was a hard-fought match, and I'm just kind of taking my supportive tape off or up on a turnbuckle. And I'm taking that tape off, and all of a sudden that fan hits the ring and kind of gets a knee on on to me, and he looks like he's about to throw. And I tell you what, Triple H explodes off the mat like a shot. And I don't know that Triple H has any amateur or shoot wrestling background, but grabs that guy in a belly-to-back suplex and almost suplexes him out of his boots. That guy goes down, and Triple H swarms on him and starts giving him a ground and pound. And then all of a sudden, Mike Kyoto, uh chips in with a couple of boots to the back. Here's the thing. I'm looking at what's going on. I digest what's going on. I see this happened so fast. It's not one of the boys. It's a fan. So I am uh, off camera to the right side of the ring. And here's why I don't join in the attack. Because, first of all, Triple H is doing pretty damn good. And uh, so wiry little fan. i got to give the fan credit for being pretty wiry. He should have never jumped in the ring. That's not good. But... Uh, I don't jump in because Triple H and Kyoto are already taking care of business. The whole time Triple H is pounding this guy, he's calling for security. There ain't no security to be found. And finally, you, this, this is a heavily edited video, security starts coming down and Triple H is disgusted. I'm a, getting, I'm a little bit mad at this point now because it's taking security so long to get down there. But as the number one baby face in the world, if I'd have joined in and started putting the boots to this kid, I would have turned heel immediately. And I was the big reason a lot of those people came to the building. So I'm not going to start beating up a fan uh, because that would have been three on one. But you under, understand this. You can read through some of these lame-ass comments at the end. Some some hit it straight on the head. Some are pretty stupid. But anything goes. When you cross through those rings, and some people are talking about Kyoto giving a cheap shot because Triple H already had him down. No, man, you don't understand. When you're on the road 300 days a year and you've been in the business as long as Kyoto has or myself has or Triple H has, when you go back to the days 20, 30, 40 years ago when guys were shooting angles that were so hot in some of these little towns and people had bought into the storyline so hard, I mean, guys are getting knifed, stabbed, cut severely. Uh, and sometimes literally having to fight their way back to the dressing room or even to the ring. That's just, I mean, that was way back when they had that shooting white heat. And this was just a case where the kid didn't like me, got caught up in the moment. But make no mistake, back, this is in 1998, 1999, and you jump through those rings, mister, it's not a fair fight. It just is what it is, and we're going to do what we can to, to secure you and make sure that you don't got nothing. Because had this guy had a knife, had he been there to cause more malice than he had, you know, something bad could have really happened out of this. So here's the thing I always liked about Triple H. And I, t I was talking to uh, uh, someone about this the other day. Triple H is one of the most laid-back, mild-mannered cats I've ever met uh, in my history of professional wrestling. And whatever you think of him is your opinion. But I know the guy. And me and, me and Triple H have always been friends. We never really travel together. Uh, we don't call each other on the phone. But we always liked working with each other, and we always sit there and shoot the breeze in the back and laugh and joke, and we have pretty much similar taste in uh, rock and roll music, so we talk a lot of music and stuff. And I think our uh, viewpoints on the business are very similar. But I always liked working with Triple H because uh, we just had great chemistry, and it would always be a flip of the coin of who was going to call a match. And sometimes we'd call a match together. But the thing right here, you know, when this guy comes in that ring and I'm taking my tape off, just trying to chill out after the match, 
Triple H had his eyes open, and he jumped up off that mat, and he grabbed that guy in a belly-to-belly -belly suplex and almost suplexed him out of his boots. And so he's raining down a couple of ground-and-pound punches to begin with, but he's not trying to throttle the guy. You can still you can see him at the end of the video. He's just trying to keep the guy down, uh, use his body weight, press on him, and he's yelling for the security guards. Kyoto comes with a couple of boots, uh, and again, that's totally, you know, I give Kyoto all the credit in the world for putting those extra boots in there because, hey, man, when you're on the road as much as we are, it's an inner circle and we are a family. Now, we're working together to take you on a ride to piss you off, uh, make you feel good, uh, tell stories that you're involved in, uh, do things that elicit an emotional response. Uh, but when it comes time for someone to jump in that ring, don't look for a fair fight because you ain't going to get one. And someone said uh, uh, there, if Triple H was uh, really hitting him, that guy shouldn't have been able to walk out of there. Well, Triple H was trying to hit him, and then he was just trying to press him down. Hey, that kid, that was a wiry little kid. And sometimes when you jump in there and you got your adrenaline going, you know, you can do pretty well. But at the end of the day, you know, I appreciate Triple H for having my back. Had the shoes been on the, or had the boots been on the other feet, I'd been working heel and he'd been working baby. I would have done the same thing he did. But again, as a number one baby face in the world at the time, I can't jump in there and make it a three on one or I'd have turned heel. And I was a big reason a lot of those people came to the building. So let me set the record straight. Uh, the guy that filmed this video, he says something, uh, stupid on the uh the little uh paragraph he writes in the middle it says it seems that triple h was not very impressed by austin stone cold stunner maybe that's why i decided to beat up the fan no dummy i'm glad you filmed the video but again that's watching out for one of the boys when things go down in that ring it's all hands on deck and everybody's together uh, yeah, he just uh, got finished taking a stunner. I think he probably took a couple of them. It was a hell of a damn match. Uh, but you don't understand the point, obviously, of what was going on. Or you're just trying to be funny. But uh, I always uh, thanked Triple H for watching out for my ass that night. And on any other occasion when stuff happened, you just got to watch yourself in a crowd. And sometimes when a crowd gets out of control, it could have been a bunch of people hit the ring. But uh, referee Mike Kyoto, I salute him for doing the kicks because it's a very small circle of people traveling around the world putting on these shows. And, hey, man, sometimes things happen, and that's just the way it is. And if you never were in a very close circle of friends or in a, a kind of environment where some, something like this could happen and maybe that guy could have had a knife. You just don't know. So uh, there ain't no fair fight when somebody comes in the ring. And you never, as a wrestler, as a performer, you never want to have to get into a skirmish with a fan. You don't want to have to beat a fan up. We love the fans. The fans pay their money to keep, uh, come see the show, and you can holler and boo and do whatever you want to a point, but you can't jump in that ring. And so it was It was interesting seeing this footage because I thought I was down a little bit longer than this before that guy hit the ring. But this is obviously the, the, the eye in the sky don't lie. And this guy did a great job of capturing every, everything. Well, he edited some of it out, but caught a, a good glimpse of what happened. And I thank Triple H for jumping on that kid. And I remember going to the back and the cops had him. Uh, handcuffed and I just I just had a couple of words for him kind of just cut a promo on him for about 15 seconds but didn't take any shots or anything like that then had the situation well under control but that was a hot night in Germany we like to rile the fans up we like to get them involved but we don't never want to have to do any kind of business or lay a hand on them I don't know what would happen if this would have happened in 2016 and Triple H is the COO of the company or whatever his title is but he's way way up there uh, you know, how you handle a situation like this is probably natural instincts. You do the exact same thing. Probably the referee might not put the boots to him, but these days, you know, security is so high, so good. Fans probably wouldn't have a chance to do this, but man, if you come up in this business old school, like in the territory system, as Triple H and I were a few of the last guys, along with Taker, who's still around, Cactus, guys like that. You heard all the stories from the veterans fighting their way back, getting cut with knives, 
getting cups of piss thrown on them in Puerto Rico, getting hit in the head with a spark plug. You've heard every horror story you can hear. And so when someone jumps in the ring, pardon me, but the shit's on. That's my take on the video that you saw that's floating around on the internet.